Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create elaborate seeming carousels with the device frame carousel widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With this widget, you can create carousels like this. At first glance, it's very dynamic. Different device frames move through the carousel even as images within each switch out with different ones. So, this widget can create a real attention grabber that serves as a great showcase of your images. And the device frame carousel has all kinds of customization options. Choose from a selection of device frames and add a different set of images to each frame. There's a lot of different possibilities with this widget. So let's see how we can make one of these for ourselves. I promise it's not as complicated as it seems. Head over to the back end. As you can see, I prepared the section where I'll be working on my carousel. Now I just need to add the widget itself. To do that, I'll search the Elementor sidebar for the device frame carousel. There it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. There are different frames in the carousel and each corresponds to an item here. We have three items and each one represents a different frame, or slide if you will, within the carousel. Now, for my design, I'm going to need one more slide, so I'll click here to create one. If you want to remove a slide, just click here to delete it. Alright. So, the first thing I'd like us to do is go over the individual options for the slides. Starting from the top, I'm going to use the first one as a showcase. The first option here allows us to pick the device frame we want to use. There are several options to choose from. For my first item, I'll use tablet. There it is now. The carousel changed immediately once I set the frame. Now, if you'd like a different device frame, you have the custom device image field. You can click here to upload an image showing a custom frame. So, if you want to show a different device or have slightly differently styled frames, you can get that by uploading an image showing the frame here. After this, the device image field is where we can select the images that will be shown within the frame. You can add as many as you like. Just keep in mind to at least somewhat match their dimensions to the frame that they're intended to fit. I'll use these three here. Create a new gallery. OK. Once you create a gallery, you can change the image order within it. The images will appear in the carousel from left to right in the same order that you put them here. Then insert gallery. Now we can easily spot the first slide in the carousel thanks to the images. Our next option is the slide width. Let me just... Oh, here's my slide now. It's on a loop, so I don't have to chase it. You can use this option to set how much of the carousel width will be occupied by this slide item. Since the default value is in percentages, I'll set 48 for my slide width. As for the device width, I'll set 97%. This will determine the width of the device frame within the space set aside for the slide. The image border radius can help us smooth out the image corner sticking out from the device frame. You can see now when I drag the slider, the edges start to round out so they're tucked up under the frame and no longer stick out. I'm going to leave the value in pixels and set 30 which is quite enough to ensure none of the edges poke out from the frame. And we also have the image offset so we can adjust the offset of the image in case it doesn't perfectly fit in the frame. You can see how the image shifts as it's pushed by the offset. But I don't need this much of an offset and I don't need the same amount on all sides. So, I'll first reset the default values and delink the fields by clicking here, then these values I enter won't be applied to all sides of the image. And there. Ok, now my image fits perfectly within the frame with nothing peeking out. Let's just check when it slides back around. Ok, looks good. Now I can start in on the second item. That's this slide here. Since all the options are the same, there's no need to go over everything again. So let's skip ahead to the point where I have all my items customized. And here we are now. All my slides are here with selected frames and appropriate images. Since that's done, we can move on to the options in the slider settings section and see what's in there. The first thing is to enable the slider loop. It's on by default and I want to keep it that way as it keeps the carousel moving in a loop. So, once it reaches the last slide, it segues smoothly into the first one, and on, and on. Then enable centered slides is set to no, but I'll switch it to yes to show you what it does. With this enabled, my active slide will always be shown right in the center of the carousel. 
and enabling the slider autoplay allows the slider to start moving as soon as the page loads, so the visitors don't have to trigger it in any way. The slider duration is the amount of time that the slide is shown before being replaced by the next one. It's 5000 milliseconds by default, but I'll make mine shorter by setting 3500 milliseconds. There. And we also have the slider animation duration. It represents the duration of the animated effect that makes the item seem to slide. The default value here is 800, but I'll set 1400 to slow it down a bit so we have time to appreciate both the movement of slides and images within them. Then we have the enable slider navigation option. By default, the navigation is enabled. You can see the arrows here within the carousel. You can switch to no to turn them off. And that's what I'll do. We also have the pagination. You can see it here. But I want to turn that off too. Name Alright. After this, we have the space between items. As its name suggests, it lets us increase the space between the slides. This. You can see the space grow when I increase the value. Slide. I want to set 30 pixels for the space here. Okay, that's it for the slider settings. After it, we have the developer tools section. When we open it, it has one option, which, if enabled, will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. That's this text here. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. I'll put this back now. We have... Okay. Now let's move on to the style tab. The settings we have here are for the navigation style and pagination style. Since I disabled mine, none of the options I'd otherwise have are accessible. So I'll go back and reactivate the navigation first to make the options appear. So slider settings, navigation, yes. Okay, let's take a look at what this got us. We can see there's quite a few navigation settings here, and the arrows are back as well. Our first option is the navigation position. It lets us switch the navigation arrows from inside to outside. However, we can't see this setting as the carousel is full width, so there's no room outside of it. And we can set together to have the arrows here in the left bottom corner of the carousel. I'll leave mine there. Then the hide navigation option lets us set below which screen width the navigation arrows will stop being visible. There are a few choices here, you can try them all out and see how they look on different devices. After that, we have the navigation alignment. It can stay on the left, or we could switch it to the right. I'll stick with using left. The space between arrows lets us put more space between the two navigation arrows. I'm happy with the default look, so I'll erase this. The navigation margin top can be used to shift the position of the arrows further down from the carousel, which is done by creating more space here. Then we have the horizontal offset if we want to make the arrows move along the x-axis. Basically, we can shift them for the right. I'll remove this as I'm happy with the default. Okay, and below this we have a field where we can replace our left navigation arrow, the one for previous slides. You can upload an SVG or pick an icon from the library. And we have the exact same thing for the right arrow, the one for the next slide. Then we have a set of normal and hover settings for the navigation display. Under normal, we can change the color of the arrows, like so. And we can also set a background color for the arrows, or their holder to be precise. I'll keep this just to show you. We can change the navigation arrow size, and we can see the space that holds the arrow increases alongside it. Then we have the navigation arrow holder width to increase the width of the arrow's holder. This, however, won't affect the arrow size. Then we have a similar option for the navigation arrow holder height. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you, so now I can reset this. And we can move on to the hover display settings, which contain the option to change the color for the navigation on hover. I'll set this. And now we can see it when we hover over the navigation arrows. Then there's the background color on hover. And you could do something like this with it. Okay. After that, we have the enable hover arrow move. It's enabled by default, so when we hover over an arrow, it moves subtly. We can disable this movement by switching to no here. And now hovering won't affect the arrows. I'll go back to the content tab and disable the navigation again. But I'll enable the pagination while I'm here so we can see what options we have for that. Okay, the bullets are here, so let's go check out the slider navigation style options in the style tab. Here we are. The first option is for setting the pagination position. We can leave it on the inside or switch it to the outside. 
The bullets are lower now, as we can see here. Then we have the alignment option, which can be set to start, so the bullets are at the furthest left edge. It can be center, this is the default one, or it can be end, which puts the bullets at the far right. For my part, I'll set them back to default. Then there's enable numbers. By switching this on, we'll get numbers in place of bullets. Like this, we can easily see the number of slides in the carousel. We can change the color of the numbers here, like this. And we can use some of the typography options for the numbers. So we can pick a different font family. You can scroll through this list or search for a font if you know its name. Then we can pick the font size here to enlarge the numbers. And we can adjust the weight using this option, so pick any of these values to set your font weight. There is also the text transform option, which is a part of typography options in general, but it won't do much good with numbers. Then we have the style option, where you can try out these settings and make the numbers italic, for example. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line over, under, or through the numbers. Simply pick the one you like if you want an added decoration. And to round out the typography options, we have the line height and the letter spacing. Okay, that's that. I'm going to turn the numbers off now so we get the bullets back. There they are. So, our next option is the pagination offset. We can use it to shift the bullets closer to or further away from the device frame carousel. Then we have some normal and active settings. Under normal, there's the pagination color. You can set any color you like using the standard color picker. Then we have the border type option. I'll set solid, for example. And then it needs a width. Two pixels is fine. And finally, it needs a color to become visible. There. Now we have a thin red border, like a frame, around each bullet that makes our pagination. Okay, I'll reset this. There. Next, we have the pagination size option. It's very straightforward. By increasing the value, we increase the size of the bullets. And the space between bullets lets us space out the pagination bullets. Okay. Under active or hover settings, we have the pagination active color. So you can set a color here, for example this one, then it shows only on the active slides bullet or one you hover over. Okay, that's all. I'll go back to the content tab to turn off the pagination as it's not part of my plan design. There. And update. And this is my finished slider. We can see the four different slides, each with a different device frame and a different selection of images within those frames. Even though I removed both the pagination and the navigation, the carousel is looping on its own, and I think it creates an effect that's very smooth and polished overall. To finish up, I'd like us to take one last look at the widgets page. We covered all the options that the device frame carousel has, so you should now be able to use them and create any of the designs you see here. Or you can opt to create something of your own. Here, for example, is the design I copied for this tutorial. But you're not limited to the suggestions here. This is just to give you an idea of the things you can do with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its device frame carousel widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.